Okay. Go ahead and start us off to London. All right, let me share my screen. Yep, we Are we gotcha. seeing the right screen? Uh, we're seeing your go-to webinar screen. Okay, perfect. All right, well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Tremble Business Center Power Hour, where we talk about all things TBC and TBC related. During today's Power Hour, we will be discussing the utilization of TBC combined with Works Manager and Works OS for landfill optimization. Attendees will be in listen-only mode, but we welcome all questions and comments, so please type them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, and we will respond accordingly. With us today, we have your host, myself, D. London Harrison, a civil engineer, construction sales support rep, along with Nick Fiferic, the CEC software regional sales specialist. And our presenter today, Mike, Tartag Mike Tartaglia, excuse me, has been in the construction industry since 1998 and brings to the table a wealth of knowledge and in-depth understanding of the entire construction process. Having worn many hard hats in the construction industry, from project manager and lead civil estimator to senior construction surveyor, he exemplifies what it takes and what it means to get the job done correctly and efficiently. And this is why we are proud to have him as a beta tester, trainer, and power user group member for Trimble Business Center. And if you're in Arizona, please stop by SciTech Southwest, or you can always find them putting up the latest informative TBC content on LinkedIn. So during today's Trimble Business Center Power Hour, Mike will show how to utilize Trimble solutions and 3D modeling to track waste amounts and increase the life of a landfill. Using data collected from the field, Mike will walk us through the utilization of TBC, Works Manager, and Works OS to show how they're used to manage volume calculations at a landfill, as well as other tips and tricks along the way. So thank you very much, Mike, for joining us, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Now I have to share my screen. How do I do that? <laughs> I can change it over to you. Yes, please. Thank you. There you All go. right. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is going to be about the uh, about landfills. And like the London had mentioned, I have been in the land uh, industry pretty much since uh, 1988 is when I was full time. And I'll give you a little kickback here. Here's a little start of a long time ago. What you see on the left are my tools of the trade. Um, you'll see that there's no computer, no phones. No T7s, T10s, none of that. Everything we had to do, we had to manually calculate and be ready to go. So I still actually have this uh, 41CX with the Super ROM chip in it. In about the mid 90s, I got the 48. But here's the tools of the trade of what we use to get things done. Again, because we were in the early 80s and 90s when I started, there was no selfies. Um, so the only photo I was able to actually find buried back um, in, in the treasure trove of photos is me right here um, out there. Uh, what I was actually doing was laying out pile locations for a big mall that we were building. I was the lead surveyor on doing that. And I'm talking to the foreman of the pile company at this time. And what I have in my hand is my actual field notebook because again, we didn't have anything to show anybody but sketches of where I was laying out the next pile locations, if that was gonna work for him. And then at the, end of the at the end of that conversation, he asked me when I was gonna come over and mark these piles um, that are built to the left so we can cut them because we have to do a concrete cap on them because they're gonna be part of the stabilization for the building. So I go way back from, you know, from doing construction layout to uh, the reason why we're talking about landfills today. Back in the early mid 90s, I was one of the um, engineers and surveyors on one of the largest privately owned landfills in New York State that we built. And we did everything in house from the start of design takeoffs to actually in-house building of, of the landfill. One of the first things I did was one of the first geocomposite liners that was placed during that, that time. And we'll talk about 
how we have evolved from where we are right now to the technology that Trimble has put together that has made landfill building a, 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 actually a breeze. To where I am today, um, kind of like what the London said, I am more uh, a, a, an outward face of the technology. So I do a lot of training on, on drones and drone flights and drone processing to uh, speaking speaking at uh, a couple of sessions here at Trimble Dimensions. So you can see in the top right, I'm, I'm actually speaking at Trimble Dimensions to I do weekly online training classes, everything from how to do a takeoff in business center all the way up to corridor work and on how to build the highway to uh, in presence uh, uh, custom training at contractors offices and you'll see down in the lower left there's uh, there's me doing a, a training class for a, a local client. Well what we're here to talk about today are landfills and Landfills are a unique ecosystem. They they need to be well run and well maintained in order to be to be successful. A lot of people think that you know all we're all they're doing here is they're just dumping garbage. They're just filling in a hole. Well, that has some truth to it, but the main truth is it has to be controlled because we have certain certain requirements that we need to meet in order for uh, this landfill to be successful. And my kids grew, basically grew up at that time uh, when I was on the landfill. So every time they would come to visit me at lunch with mom, they were like, can we come up on the top of the hill? So I would bring them up on top of the hill and kind of show them the works to now where they're in their mid twenties and they drive by a landfill and people would be like, man, does that smell? And my kids today will still say, yeah, that's a smell of money right there because they, they've heard the conversations, they've seen me working on the designs and the layout and, and the maintaining of the landfill to where um, they know that if it's well run, you can make a profit. So the key things that we wanna focus on when we're, when we're using this technology uh, in a landfill, the most important things are airspace. What airspace is, is when we go in and we do a design to get approval for, for a landfill, we have set grades that we can build to. That is considered our airspace. That's where we can build up to. We can't go beyond that, um, but we want to stay at that level. So that, that is very important on the airspace. The landfill life. The landfill life is like how many years can you keep bringing waste into this footprint of that airspace and uh, extend the life of the landfill? And that's one of the things that we're gonna be talking about today is, is the maintaining and, and the placement and the density and the compaction of, of the waste. The third thing that is very important to the landfill is safety. And with the technology that we have today by the use of business center and the machines uh, out there, safety has been uh, exemplified because of that. Where in the olden days, and I'm gonna, I'll show you how we used to have to monitor things. Safety really wasn't a lot of safety. We, we had to maintain number one and number two but there's times when we were actually outstanding on the working face of a cell, getting shots and monitoring what is where the waste is, how much the waste is being placed, um, almost on a daily basis. And you can see here that this isn't the busiest time of the landfill that we're working on. Um, but there was times where you can have, you know, 14, 15 walking floors lined up here and a couple of regular dumps. Um, standing here, you got the machines moving around and you're trying to not get hit uh, by, a, by a, a compactor or a dozer. And those guys are trying to monitor, making sure that they don't hit the back of the walking floor as the waste comes off because they're trying to push the waste out of the way. So there's just a lot of moving parts out here that people don't realize that with this technology, you're actually taking and, and making your safety a lot, a lot better. And the three of these things equate to profit. Um, that's the main thing of the landfill is the profit. In order, it doesn't matter if it's a privately owned landfill or if it's a municipality, profit is is, is king. You know, the, the old saying is king is cash while well, cash flow in a landfill is king. So we wanna make sure that we can keep the cash flowing and then everybody will be happy, everybody will have a job and you can extend the life of your landfill. 
So how we used to monitor the landfill? Well, back in those days, we did not have the ability to load a, load a model on a machine or um, you know pull things off by drones that we'll be talking about. You saw my toolkit. That was my toolkit even when I was building this landfill from 1994 to uh, 1990, from no 1992 to 1998. Um, those tools that you saw on that photo is the same tools that we used. Um, AutoCAD version two is what I was using at the time. Eagle Point software, I know it's different than, than Trimble, but I'm trying to build the backlog here, um, the backstory. Eagle Point software had just come out and it piggybacked on the back of AutoCAD. And it was a 42 disc system. And you had to manually load each disc into your computer. And on top of that, you had a whopping maybe 30 megabyte hard drive. That was big at that time, you know? And you're trying to load all these in, and if a disk didn't work, you couldn't just go to the computer and download a new, you try re-downloading the software. No, you had to wait for them to send you a new disk, so you had to make things work. So how we monitor that, and I'll draw some, I'm gonna use my little tool here and draw a couple of sketches here for everybody just to kind of give you an idea of how the landfill was working. When I talk about airspace, whoops, let me uh, erase this and clean this right out. And let me come in here. When we talk about airspace, what we have here is we have a set area that we can we can use to fill the landfill. The standard here is a outer slope of a three on one. You wanna maintain the three on one slope. And then in here, depending upon where you are, like in New York, we definitely had gradient on, on our waste because we had to handle uh, snow, rain, leachate. So leachate was another big thing that we had to, to maintain and operate um, on, on a daily basis. So we have this slope here and what we have is uh, waste being placed. So we have, you know, waste coming in and there, you know, we got some waste in here being placed, coming, coming like this. And then let's say that it did something like that. All right. Now we have machines up here. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, my sketching is not too good with the mouse, but I'll kind of sim stimulate it. Here's a, a dozer, okay, or, or a compactor pushing. And what we used to have to do in the, in, in the old days is we would actually have a total station down here on the bottom of the of the base of the hill. And what we were doing is we had a, a guy with the prism rod on a daily basis and we would do this maybe two to three times a day come out here and he'd be shooting this waste i'd be down here telling him how much he has to fill to get to this top of waste grade he's then radios over to this operator who then will you know radio back to him and then what he's going to do from here and this is where the safety came in is that he would just start pushing the waste down and what the guy with the rod would do would move out of the way. And when he came down and got what he thought was to grade, our rodman would come back, we would take a shot, we would radio back to him again, and then he would just keep pushing this as we were as we were doing it. So as you can see here, safety wasn't really, it, it was everybody's head had to be on a swivel. My son played hockey and we always had, we always said on the bench, head's gotta be on a swivel because that hospital run hit is coming if your head's not on a swivel. Same thing here, the head had to be on the swivel because there's machines, there's waste, there's stuff coming down that, that side slope and you had to make sure that uh, you know everybody was safe. So we would do this like two or three times a day on this face. In the meantime, why we were what we were also doing on other parts of the landfill, I'll draw this little sketch here again, is we would have, say, this part of the landfill built. And then we came in and we would basically do the same thing. We would come in and we would do a bunch of topo on these slopes. Um, every every month we would be doing topos on the slopes that are already built. The reason for that is if we come back and we talk about airspace, we talk about life of the landfill, we may have uh, put a final cap on the landfill. And what a final cap is is a clay liner and it's like two foot thick. 
So we may have come in and put a clay liner in of this two foot thick, okay? And we took shots and we realized that our shots were down here and our waist is up over here, okay? And that's where our waist should have been. This is the top of the liner, this is two foot thick. So what we were doing back then is we were monitoring what was happening and how much compaction and shrinkage we were getting on the landfill just as the landfill was breathing and living on its own because it is a breathing living organism in, in a way and what we were able to do by by doing this on a monthly basis is we were able to monitor what was actually happening so we would take these shots and we would take the shots all the time in the same area and then we didn't have excel we had a thing that was pre-Excel was called, called Lotus 123. And we would we create these Lotus 123 spreadsheets. We would draw up these profiles, not by CAD, but by hand, the profiles on profile paper and cross sections. And what we would do is present this to the DEC. And what we have been able to do a lot of times is get the approval from the authority to actually come in and remove this cap. Okay, so we came in and were able to remove this cap. What that allowed us to be able to do is where we were close to grade, so let's say that this was only like a, a foot difference from, from here, we were now able to come in and start filling all of this area back in with waste. So we, what we essentially did is regained lifespan of our landfill on the existing footprint of the airspace that we were given. And what that allowed us to be able to do is start putting in permits for gaining more waste, getting more waste in on a weekly, daily, monthly, yearly basis. We weren't changing the footprint, but we were able to now start taking in more waste. The more waste you get coming over your scale, the more profit you're making. So we were monitoring this, like I said, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. We would fly this quarterly by use of a plane. We had no drones. There was no drones. There was no technology today. So then at the at the end, we would then get the flight at the end of the year and we would have to fly in the fall because you wanted to make sure the leaves are off the trees. You fly at a certain time of the day so you didn't get any shadowing on it. Um, we had to make sure that our targets were, were big enough and out far enough. So there's times where we actually set targets a quarter of a mile away from the landfill in order to be able to make sure that we had good ties. Then we would bring that into AutoCAD. And, and remember, we didn't have the ability to do cut to fill calculations like we do today. So a lot of it had to deal with use of polymeters and other stuff to come up with volume calculations. And then we would compare that to the shots that we took on the top of the landfill. And that would start to let us know, you know, how accurate and what is happening at, at the top of the landfill. How much shrinkage are we getting based upon that? So this is what we had to do in the early days of, of the landfill. So that's how we monitored it. Now, does the monitoring change today? No, it's still exactly the same, except that you have a lot more tools to have information given to you in an instance. You don't have to wait for somebody to go out there and do the topo. You, with the use of drones today, you can come out there and you can fly your drones. So that's where we're gonna be going with, with uh, uh, the use of this technology that we have. So we're going to be talking about TBC's role right now in, in, in the landfill. And TBC can play a big role in your landfill because it ties in so well to the whole um, ecosystem of the, the Trimble technology. So what we have here is, is Trimble Business Center. And what does Trimble Business Center allow us to be able to do? Well, we can build our fill progression plans. And what the fill progression plans are, and I'll get into that a little bit more, but you can kind of see where we have these different fill areas in here. And that's how we are controlling now in today's world, how we're placing this waste. Where <clears throat> back in the old days, we would go out there, bang stakes in the ground. Now remember, you got trucks coming in all over the place. 
So those sticks didn't really last that long, but we were basically laying out the limit of where we wanted to, to place the waste. Um, not to get sidetracked, but one other thing that we did on the side slopes to try to remove people from going in is we had a, a shop, a metal shop on site, and we actually built a metal that was 10 foot high um, by 30 foot long. So we had to move it actually with an excavator that had a slope of a three on one in it. And we put it at the end of each side of the working face on the side slope to give the operators kind of a guide of what the slope is supposed to look like. And what we were hoping that that would do at that time was eliminate, you know, us from having to go out there, you know, three times a day to check. Maybe we can go out there one time and, and hopefully they would be, be close. So with this fill progression plan, what you're doing is, is you're loading this design into the machine. The machine will know where it has to be placed, how much waste has to go in. So now all you're doing is you're using the other tools to monitor, maintain, and make sure that everything is going in correctly. The other uh, thing that Business Center will help is exporting the plans to the machines on the hill. Now this again comes back to safety. We don't have to now go up to the hill and load onto the machine. We put our field progression plan together. We, we like the way uh, it looks. That's what we wanna put into the machine. We can now export it from Business Center directly to the machines we want it to go to. You wait maybe about 15, 20 minutes. All you have to do is get on the radio, call the operator, tell him to switch over to his plans. And next thing you know, he's now working on the next fill plan that you have. Again, safety, nobody's up there. Nobody's climbing up and down the machines, moving in the way, having to stop the actual operation. The operator can change on the fly. Business center is now also a hub to monitor the ongoing progress of the operation. So we can take all of this information. If you have a rover, you can do shots of rovers. You can bring drone information in. You could um, bring information from the machine. So I'm gonna show you that your machine, when it's out there, it's actually a mapping machine. So you'll see here on this landfill that I'm gonna be talking about, um, it is stuck in between two air bases and a regular airport. We cannot get a drone approved to fly at all. So what we have to do is we have a plane and we, they had to put a budget together to have a plane come out um, quarterly and fly the site. So as we were mentioning before, we wanna monitor the site. So instead of having everybody out there on a daily basis, we're using some of the technology tools that are there where we can get instant information of what is actually happening on the landfill through the hub of business center. And then we're able to provide as-built drawings and reports. So to go back to what I mentioned in the old days where we'd have to draw things on profile and cross-sectional paper um, and then do Lotus 1, 2, 3 reports, with Business Center, you're able to generate as-built drawings of what the, cross slope, what the slopes look like, where you are, you can make design changes, um, give reports out. And then if you feel that you have a good case where you can go in and present it to um, you know, the deciding uh, uh, overview site of, of the, whatever DEC um, you have, environmental conservation is in your area, that you can prove a case where you can go back down the slope a little bit and remove and regain some of your airspace. Um, you'll be able to prove these drawings with the, with the use of Trimble Business Center. So this is what Business Center is going to give you the ability to do along with the other Trimble technologies. So what I'm going to, to do here is I'm going to flip over into Business Center and I'm going to kind of show the workflow. This is the landfill that I'm going to be, be showing um, the, the workflow of. This is the fill progression plans that you kind of saw in a little bit of a cr uh, cross-sectional area that they're actually using to, to build and monitor this um, on, on a daily basis. So let me um, get out of here and I'm going to come into Business Center. And you'll see here with Business Center, um, I have the ability to do a couple of things. The Business Center is calibrated to the actual site. So we know exactly where everything has to be placed in Business Center. The thing about Business Center that, that is really cool, um, and I, I had these on for uh, the tech support that I was doing. So let me turn this off just to kind of show you what my Business Center actually looks like 
when I am I'm doing this. So this is what my business center looks like. This is how my clients' business centers usually look. Is we have menus set up to be whatever they're going to be working with. And here's the the landfill toolbar. You also want to make sure that you have things neat and organized as as you're doing this. So you'll see here that we, with the use of layers and layer groups and fill view filters, we're able to um, very quickly monitor what we're doing and where we're working and where we're going to go next. So with Business Center, I'm able to do a couple of things here. I can bring in our latest flight, which was done in June. So what this will do, this will load in the, the contours that were given to us from, from the flight company. Here we can, you know, create our, our surface off of this. From that, from this surface, what we're able to do here is then come in and, whoops, create a cut the fill map of the of the waste so we can kind of see and, and get a rough idea of where we are from that day to where we need to go and you can see we can generate a cut the fill map and we can have it also at the same time live give us what our remaining cubic yards of fill are between those two flights so again with the other tools, you'll be able to go out and monitor uh, what your your compaction rate is. Does that match to what you're seeing here? The life of the landfill that you're being given in other Trimble products, how does that match? So you're able to do a lot of cross-referencing and that that is a, a big thing here. Um, so instead of you know always handing your paper over to somebody else or your field book like I used to do and say, hey, all right, can you run these numbers and make sure that my level loop is done correctly? What you're able to do here is you'll have many different Trimble products that are giving you numbers that you can go out there and monitor the numbers to make sure that you're on track for uh, your years of, of remaining life and can you, because of this, see you start seeing some natural shrinkages happening and compactions happening? Can you expand your amount of waste coming over your scale on a daily, uh, you know, weekly, yearly, or daily basis? So we have that. The next thing that we have the ability to do again, this site is is unique. Again, it is surrounded by Air Force bases and an airport we cannot fly. So what we're doing is we're using the technology of Trimble um, on a machine. And what we're able to do is go out here and we can click on this create machine data overlay. And what this allows us to be able to do is go out there. And as your machine is out there working in a cell, it is actually mapping. And what we can do is we can say we want to pull off of that machine where they are elevation wise and footprint wise on this particular time, this particular day. So you would come in, you would give it an overlay name, you would tell you want a coverage say of elevation. Um, machines, if you have more than one machine right now, they're only running one compactor. They have another one coming online in a couple of weeks. So this part will be important for them um, when we when we start working on this because they're going to have one machine working in the new cell, cell 4A, and then they'll have another one on the top of the hill that is working in an existing uh, cell three. So we may need to pull m information off of different machines. So you'll be able to come in here and filter by a machine. Then you can select your, your week that you want it to be from, and then you hit create. And what that will do is when we hit create, is it will create um, a machine overlay. And that's why I have a view filter here set for uh, machine overlay. And what, what you originally get in the beginning will get um, a footprint just kind of showing you where they were working. So you can see here, here's the mouse droppings of where the compactor started that morning and it worked itself down down the slope um, to, to the working face and you're able to see where it ran and pushed some waste from the trucks over into the working face at the time. From here, what we're able to do with this is now we can come in and say, create a machine data surface. And what that's going to do for us is that's going to create um, a surface for us that is going to generate a surface here that is going to have this mouse droppings and, and these footprints in it. 
cool thing about Business Center, we have a lot of tools at, at our beck and call that we can come in and we can clean this up. So by the use of some some of the tools that I have built into my template here, where you know the polygon select and, and point cloud regions, because this is actually creating a, a point cloud for us, I can come in and create a cleaned up surface. So if I come in and I turn on the point cloud in the scan, what you'll see here is we definitely have a point cloud. So if I turn the surface off, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll see here that we have a surface. So if I look at this in 3D, what this will generate for us will be a surface or a point cloud from the actual machine. And we can come in and do any other minor cleanups that we need from it. Once we have it the way we like, we can now have our actual surface created from that point cloud. What we could do at that point in time is then, you know, use a tool and say, okay, how much fill did we actually put in here compared to, you know, where we were on, you know, that, that day of flight. So now we can do volume calculations between how much fill did we actually put in compared to where we were on the 20th of June. So we have the ability to do to do that. Um, and that is done by doing just a, a basic surface to surface earthwork report. You just pick your two surfaces and very quickly get a report to, to pop up. So we have, we have the ability to do that. And then that report will, will show up here. Um, where is it? My thought I had a report here. Um, let me show, do this here real quick. So what you have here is we have the earthwork reports. So um, what you'll see here on this earthwork report, um, we we came out and we were able to figure out, you know, our, our fills and how much we we put in into this area. Um, so yeah, so here it is. So we can see here that the material placed in that area from our flight in September to where they were on September 4th, on that Friday afternoon, they had placed, um, they had like 71,000 yards that they had put into into that area. So we we're able to kind of get an idea of where where things are at that point in time um, as we're going along building building this. This will now also play into play for our fill progression plans. So we want to start uh, you know building fill progression plans. We want to be able to now have the the machine be able to monitor exactly where it is and how much waste it's placing because you want to be able to make sure that you meet a compaction level because on the machine the machine will be set up to whatever machine that you're using whatever compactor and business uh trimble uh software is smart on the machine that it kind of tells you based upon this machine um, your thickness of your lift should be this thick and this is roughly how many passes you should be able to do with that machine to reach maximum capacity of, of compaction. And again, why is that important? Because if we go back to, we only have a set footprint of airspace, we have a life based upon that footprint of airspace. If we could maintain a very tight compaction and density and control of that waste, that second feature, that lifespan of the landfill will increase and our airspace will stay exactly the same. So that's why this is very important um, on, on why we're doing this and how te Trimble technology here is playing a big part in maintaining uh, the landfills. So what we have is we have this in and we now know where we are. What we're able to do is take this surface now and we can merge it with our surface that was flown on the 20th of June. And now we can have a new surface area in this cell that we could use to generate our next lift plan. So from here, the next thing we wanna do is come in and we wanna do our cell 4A designs. And what our cell 4A designs are, these are the lifts of where the placement of waste is, is going to be. And you can kind of see here that we have them um, in, in a step format. So if I were to do a cross-sectional view across here and say, I want to come across this like this, what we'd be able to see here is here's our, our flight with our other merged area in. And 
here's the design that we built and they wanted a four on one coming down over onto onto this side and the reason why is is we're, what they're hoping for is that by the time they get ready up to here they will and and it fill in another area on an existing they will have uh the approval to get going because they're starting to work on cell 4b get this area built in so then we'll just come in on cell 4b and we'll just start filling cell 4b in until we get to the the height and then from here we'll just start man uh, building up until we hit our limit this line right here comes back to our our airspace that's our airspace line we cannot go above that that is the top of the waste so what we want to do is we want to maintain and fit and compact as much waste inside the this footprint to extend the life but not increase our airspace so we come in and we'll start building these these lift plans in 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 business center and how that is how that is done is by the use of a couple of tools so one of the tools that we'll use is right here on my toolbar where we'll say create a contour at an elevation. So we'll come in and I'll click on this just to kind of show you how the tool works. And the surface that I'm gonna to go to is say going to be to say uh, that, that flight. We wanna know where we are in that flight. We're gonna create a contour and they went out there with their rover and they shot the top of a, a berm that's there. And the top of the berm came out to be around 2714. They say, okay, we wanna to fill to that berm level in, in this area. So then what we did is we came in and we created a contour that went around the existing cell to show us where um, that contour was going to be. So we knew where our waste had to be and where it was going to tie into the existing surface. So now if I come in and I'll turn off my surfaces here and we'll turn on this finished grade one. Um, oh, I wasn't let me surface. I wanted to come in and turn these off here and let's turn on our 217. So you can see that this uh, 2714 is where this line tied into the existing cell based upon the flight at that time. Then from here, what we did is we said, okay, how big of a, a top working face do we actually want to, to be finished with? And they gave us what the top of the finished waist uh, would be. So now we came in and we were able to make a line in here. And that line is now tied into that uh, 2017. So if I were to turn this off and let me turn on uh, this surface here, the existing flight surface. And if I come in and look at this in, in 3D, what you'll be able to see here is how this is coming off of the existing site. So you can see here where we tied into the existing site and you can see the back of the berm here where we're tying into. Um, you can see where we have that part of the lift plan designed. And then from there, they said, okay, we want to just tie this in at a four on one to that existing cell um, that's there. So then all we did is we came in and we projected a, um, a line down in and we used another tool in Business Center, um, which was our, our slope tool. And that's where we were able to create a, a tie slope down into this. From here, we were able to then create our finished grade cell. Okay, so now we had our finished grade cell designed um, in here. And if I turn on the, the flight again, what you'll see here is we now have our existing, that, that top lift of where they want to get to at, for this cell built. Then from there, we came in and we did a basic, very quick surface to surface volume calculation to see how much fill we actually have that needs to go into that cell to reach this. And based upon that, they then said, okay, we wanna have X number of lifts at an X number of height. And then what we were able to do from here is come in and start building our, our next set of lifts. So we have this surface here. And then with the use of a, a, a flat plane, surface in business center and then the use of a, a great tool from rock pile solutions called um, surface intersect line string what we were able to to do and if i click on this what we were able to do here is start tying 
everything in our first surface, whatever our first surface was at the time, to our second surface. So we were able to tie tie that surface into that elevation. And what that started to do for us, and then we were able to tie into this slope. So now we have true tie into to the tie-in slope coming down on the four on one. We're tying into the existing landfill. And what we were able to do here is start building like our lift one. So now you'll see that we have lift one built and lift one came off of our first lift. Okay, then we had lift two. We did the same thing, we built lift two. And then we built our lift three. So now we have our three lifts here that you saw in cross-sectional view. And again, I'll come back over to here and do another cross-sectional view. What you're able to see is we were able to build, whoops, these lift plans coming in here. And this area here may have been a little, a little thicker, but again, they're controlling the amount of waste because they have the color coding and stuff inside the box um, to get the, the colors in here so they get the compaction. And then when they get to this grade, all they have to do in the machine is just hop to lift two, lift three, and then this lift four will get them to the, the top of here. And throughout this whole process at any time, again, we're able to pull information off the machine. We're able to see you know, how much work they actually did for the day, what, how big of an area they, they put in. Um, we'll be able to monitor scale, uh, waste coming in across the scale. That's gonna help us to come down with the, the compaction number and the density number of what we're actually placing and how well our compaction is actually going. Are our compactors, doing their job and ma maintaining and making sure that they're meeting the most optimal amount of capacity, uh, compaction and density on this material. So we're able to extend the life of the landfill. Now, the cool thing about this is we're now able to, with this information, once we, we like this and, and everybody in the office approves it and, the, and you know, we may have a designer that's designing this, he has to get it approved through the, the site superintendent or the landfill superintendent on what he's doing. If, he, if this is good, then all they do at that point in time is create this information. And then we just, through the other tools of Business Center, push this information up to the machines. The machines then, you call up, you tell the operator, okay, what I want you to do, I know you're filling in this area here. Um, we're gonna now control this a little better. So I want you to put this fill plan of lift one in here and start filling this in. And then he'll just start filling this area in along this, this area here. So once they have that, they just go to the next lift, next lift, next lift. The good part about it again is you can bring information in, get volume calculations and know where everybody is. So you can see here where we've increased the, the life of the landfill, kept the same airspace with this technology. But the key thing is we also have made it a very, very safe environment now for one, the truckers coming into the site because now they know where we're going to place the waste they know how to stage the trucks so now we had we don't have people just willy-nilly putting waste everywhere dumping it and pushing it we can have that as a controlled environment um, so if you have a guy out there directing your trucks a lot of these bigger landfills actually have people their job is to direct the trucks where to go they know the actual footprint and where people are going to do. You have less people on the working face. You don't, the truckers aren't worrying about, are they gonna run somebody over as they're backing up? The compactor isn't looking for somebody going, okay, are you taking a shot? How close am I? They're not waiting for somebody to call back to them and say, hey, you still have like three foot of fill to go in here. And then they have to walk off the working face. You push the working face in, they compact it. They give you the thumbs up, you get out of your truck. So now you got a guy sitting there waiting. That's what you used to have to do. He would call down and say, okay, I'm ready to shoot. Put his rod on the waist, you take the shot, you call up to him. He has to radio back to the operator. The operator comes back in. So what, what you've done is you sped up the process of the landfill and you also increase the safety. And all of this is going to increase the profit. If you're, a, if you're a landfill on here, hopefully you're seeing that this is gonna increase your profit margin. If you are a contractor for a landfill, hopefully you're gonna see that this is going to help you 
um, make that landfill more successful. If you're a, another site tech on here, hopefully this is going to help you be able to show the true benefit to a landfill or to, to a contractor that does landfill work, why this technology is so important for them and how that's going to actually help everybody all the way around. So once we have that all set, the cycle just starts all over again. We go back, we create new view filters, we'll create new layer groups, and we'll just start the whole cycle and the process over and over and over again. And the cool part about um, Business Center is it is so expandable and meets just your particular needs that what you're able to do with this is, is you can have everybody in your office all on the same page. They could be all running the same view filters. They could all be running the same layer managers. They could all be running the same tool tips. So it doesn't matter what anybody's running. Everything is all exactly the same, which they're in the office we, we didn't talk much about the office, we talked about the field, but you also want efficiency and proficiency in the office. Think about the time that it took us to bring the information in, download our data collectors, um, and a lot of times you saw that 48, that was my data collector, um, with a super ROM chip in it, we would have to download the information that we had on it in northern east scenes and elevations. Again, AutoCAD version two, there was no import of that. We had to actually hand type that stuff in along our designs to know and then manually create our cross sections. So think about the time that this is speeding up in the office and making the offices more efficient and proficient where you can come up with numbers pretty quick. So if somebody needed a number really, really quick and say, hey, you know what? I need to run down say to city hall or I need to go into this board meeting. Can you tell me where we are right now how much waste have we brought in? Compare that to the waste over the scale. So then you can kind of give them an idea. Okay, we have X number of tons coming over the scale. In this working phase, we have X number of cubic yards. You can put that to tons. We placed here, but then we also have another face that we're working on and we placed it over here. So now you have numbers and reports that you can go into any meeting very quickly with and, and show how well run your landfill actually actually is. So again, this definitely from coming from old school, this definitely beats the way that we used to have to, to do things. And it actually has relieved a lot of the a lot of the stress on on the designer and and the fill guys, you know, in the office um, to come up with numbers and and monitor. But again, this was a unique situation on this landfill. Um, we can't fly. I have to fly, you know, like I said, on on a quarterly basis and come up with numbers. But with the technology that's out there with the drone capabilities, you know, at the end of a day or at the end of a week, you can go out there, throw your drone up in the air, come up with, you know, bring that back in, do some volume calculations, design your, your cells off of, off of that, you know, um, and, and make any tweaks and things that you want. Um, you know, what we're also doing is we're, we're starting to look at existing uh, slope cells or slopes on cells, like what I talked about before. And we're starting to see, okay, what do we, what can we get? Can, can we, you know, get approval to go back down some of these slopes and, and fill some of this in due to natural uh, shrinkage. They, they may have not worked in that area in like two or three years and, and there's actual uh, shrinkage. Well, that's airspace, that's money that we can regain. So we're starting to look at that and it's so easy with Business Center to cut, cr you know, cross sections. As you saw here, we were able to cut a cross section really quick. Now, if we wanna generate, you know, um, uh, detail, uh, plan sheets, we can do that and then we can present that to, to whoever we need to. Um, and that's one of the steps that we're into here right now is we're, we're actually working with the, the deputy of, of them, of the city here. And we're, we're talking about putting these things together to try to see if we can gain, you know, some of that airspace that we have to us um, in, in that footprint. So uh, again, very, very readily available on, on information um, coming in. So, with these tools, um, this is really gonna gonna help you. And again, I wish I had this back in the early 90s because it would have saved us a whole heck of a lot of time and headaches. So hopefully, awesome. you know, people found the, the use of uh, the workflow and business center helpful. Again, I know I did. I went over things really really quick because 
if I was going to really teach how to do this, we're talking a day, day and a half worth of worth of training classes right here, just to get to to the point of where we are right now. So, um, hopefully, you found it helpful and insightful. And basically, I'll turn it over back over to uh, to Nick because I know we're we're getting close on time, and I know he has some things that he wants to go over and there may be some other panelists that may want to speak. So I, I appreciate everybody taking the time to come and, and listen to me on, on this. And um, I look forward to talking to everybody. So on that, Nick, go ahead and you can have it back. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you very much. That was a great presentation. Uh, very insightful. Let me just uh, switch over. I'm going to uh, talk about some prerequisites just to make sure everybody understands exactly what is used within the solution that's been presented today. Um, and then show some basic resources as I normally do on these things of where you can get basic information and such. So, give me a minute. Okay. You guys see the PowerPoint presentation? I should say prerequisites. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. So, the three things that are needed as far as um, what you need to get from Trimble in order to make this solution work for you. Uh, number one, obviously, Business Center, right? We just released a version 5.32 uh, at the end of August. You need the Site Modeling Edition to get all of the tools uh, that uh, Mr. Tartaglia was showing and using with it, um, within the presentation. Uh, to transmit the data to and from the field, we have a solution called Trimble Works Manager. Um, you can transmit data directly out of Business Center or through a web interface uh, to get that data <clears throat> to the actual machines themselves. And then uh, the the this doesn't work unless we actually have some basic information coming back from the field uh, through the machines, and that's what Trimble uh, Works OS is doing for us. So what, it will be recording that data um, or surface data that then is then imported into Business Center in order to run said reports. Um, for Works OS and, the, and how you guys or what you guys are going to need to do in order to get this done, um, number one, mapping needs to be turned on uh, within the machine control systems uh, on your machine. So that's GCS, Earthworks, CCS, PCS must be turned on. Um, in order to communicate back to the office, we need to have some type of modem, um, and we're working with a Works Manager subscription in order to do that uh, with uh, proper licensing. Um, we need to have a dot, uh, dot .cal or calibration file that's been loaded into the system. Um, Mike was talking about that in the beginning. In order for you guys, number one, in Business Center to see that background map that Mike was showing, that was not an ortho, but Google Earth in the background. And you have to be able to tell where you're at uh, in order for all of this to work so the data all lines up on top of each other. Otherwise, you can't run a proper volume calculation. Um, and then, of course, the Works OS user license. Um, other resources and next steps. Uh, so in order to get a hold of Business Center, um, these are just Business Center resources at this point, but uh, Business Center, there's two places that you can go to. We have a construction portal and a geospatial portal uh, that you can go see the latest webinars, customer success stories, bulletins, white papers, and downloads and such. Um, we have uh, learning resources online um, where you can go to YouTube, for instance. Um, and uh, other sources I'm going to show you in a second where you can actually see and learn how to use this software, mainly showing of workflows. Um, we have our Trimble Power Hour. As you can see, uh, the construction side runs these once a month. Um, we will have one coming up next month as well. Uh, and then uh, Geospatial is running, uh, running one or two of them per day. Um, we have our community pages and to get the latest and greatest information uh, that is out there for Business Center, um, to see upcoming events, to see uh, upcoming trainings, um, to see when the next power hour is, to talk to your uh, fellow um, TVC leaders out there, uh, talking about workflows, uh, talking about, you know, if you need need something within the software you can you can send messages to the developers and such through that that portal we have our tbc macros community page this is um 
this is where you can find a lot of the macros. Uh, Mr. Tartaglia was talking about uh, TML um, uh, status and rock pile solutions, a uh, really quick way to uh, get your macros into the system. But if you want to, you can always go to the TBC macros community page, download those and apply accordingly. Uh, we have our TBC online library. This is another training resource that I mentioned just a little bit ago. Um, this is a great online platform that has videos, workflows, and such uh, that you guys can do a lot of do-it-yourself learning uh, within within um, that that uh, portal. Um, for the next steps, as far as getting a hold of it, you can download TBC 5.32. If you haven't um, uh, use Business Center in the past and want to try it prior to uh, making a purchase, you could always get a free 30-day demo license uh, through the online request form. This is when you hit the download um, when you go to that web page to download the software to begin with. It'll take you right through that. Um, the next TBC Power Hour <clears throat> is going to be Trimble Business Center and Works OS uh, using machine data to create an as-built. So in this case, we were we were using it to track waste. Uh, next, we're going to be using it to track um, the uh, installation of a um, uh, it was a fiber optics line, if I'm correct, right, Mike? Yep, yep. Um, an underground fiber, fiber optics, optics yep. line that they were burying. Um, at the exact same time they were placing it, and we needed to come up with as-built drawings for it. Perfect. Um, Mr. Tartaglia will be back with us to present that uh, October 14th, same time, same uh, on a Wednesday. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, please reach out. Um, we will answer them offline, and this, this is recorded, so if you ever want to watch it again, um, you could always do so as well. Thank you all for coming. I very much appreciate it. And as a team, we all appreciate your attendance here. Thank you.